Right, next stage of the walk, just pass through uphill, past the, on the path below the church and the quarry and the boats and uh, I've got to make a decision when I get further down whether I want to do the track over that way or go a bit further and get on a small road, which can be dangerous, to near the Anchor Pub. I'll see how boggy it is. When I get um, nearer, I'll see how boggy it is, whether I go that way or not. <sighs> I did want to go that way, because then you go around the back of the old road. Because uh, normally, by the time I've done some of my hikes, say from um, Winchcombe up to Crook's Peak and then back over. What happens now? I, I've been cutting, I've been not doing this bit, I've often been getting on the bus. <laughs> but now, because we can't use the buses, you know, I've decided to uh, come down here. But there are quite a few people out, mainly because people are being hemmed in and um, they should, everyone's got to get out as you get cabin fever. Hoovering it for a minute. Happy little dog back there. I mean, I do go off track a lot, but the thing is, it could all be very muddy where I'm going. What I'm going to do today, I'm going to go towards Bleeden Village. That's the aim, to go to Bleeden Village. And then, <sighs> cut up by the church at Bleeden. And then um, go cross country. Then I'll decide once I'm up there whether I'm going to go <sighs> down by the river a bit. I don't know how boggy that would be, but see, this is the only time of year you can do it. They won't be letting the cows out yet, but look how boggy it is here. Now, when I get to this gate in a minute, I'll see if my, the track I wanted to do is really, really, really boggy. Then I'm going to change direction and go up further along this track, get on the road and then I've got a little bit of double bends to do to come out by the anchor in. Uh, just hope I don't get run over if I do that stretch because people do race around these. Uh, but I'm hoping that it might be, there might be a slither of land here I can walk on without having to worry about um, getting my feet wet at the very start of the walk really. But as you can see we've had a lot of rain. A lot of rain. But it's a lovely day today. It's a bit windy. But I am keeping off the buses at the moment till this exponential curve has flattened a bit. That doesn't mean it isn't lurking about this bug. But at the moment, because they haven't tested anyone, we don't really know if anyone's actually ever had it yet. I mean, they're saying people are dying. People in their 80s die of pneumonia anyway. Yeah, let's have a look. Is it going to be at all possible to go up the sides? <sighs> Might be. Let's have a look. Oh, so why ain't that bloody undoing? Turn it off a minute. I might have to climb over. Right, okay, wait a minute. She was going to climb over the gate. I'm climbing up behind the camera. This is supposed to be the West Mendip Way route. And 
hopefully it won't all be quagmire. It looks like some sort of animal's been here though, doesn't it? This looks very fresh. Might be I've got to turn back, see? Don't want to run into a herd. And then what might happen if I have to turn back? I might not do the walk I intended because if it's quite a big walk anyway. So any extensions will be not welcome today but this I've been wanting to do this track for a long time I haven't done it for several years because normally at the end of one of my walks which is normally bigger than what I've done today um, I'm too tired to do this last bit God, it doesn't have to look like it's been churned by cows. We'll soon find out in a minute. Don't look that old either. I wonder if the toilets at the village will be open. They might shut public toilets now because of uh, contamination. That's the other thing, see? And people pinching the bog roll. I've got no idea at the moment. This, these look very fresh. Seems a bit early for cows to be out, but this looks like it's happened this morning. There might be a bloody great herd in a minute. <sighs> Never mind, we'll find out one way or another. This is a drove, you see. This is what you call a drove here. <sighs> right, I'm gonna turn off for a minute. Be back on in a minute. Right, carrying on the drove, which runs at the bottom of uphill. I can see the tower through the trees there. I just met three walking ladies. There's a massive herd that's been brought in here and taken into a field over there, but the gate's shut. But I would have thought that would have happened today. Massive herd. And they're all sat down in a field over there. So like I say, this is a type of drove. Breathing's settled now. It's always a little bit laboured at the start, and it always has been, even when I was in my 20s, you know. It's always been like that, a little bit laboured. I mean, I used to run marathons, right? For me, people used to moan about the last mile, which, yeah, is a mental strain. Um, but I used to find the first three miles were worse, till I got in my rhythm and my breathing. I used to find that really hard. My lungs used to hurt and everything in the beginning. And then, they would settle. Uh, over there. So I've just come along there. There's the uphill woods there and a nursing home called The Grange, which I did a couple of uh, agency shifts in when I was a nurse. I did quite a few shifts in that place. Reminded me of the film The Shining. It was quite spooky, actually. I mean, the first shift I ever done there, the staff nurse handing over to me gave me a very, very rapid look round. Just showed me where the drug cupboard was. Says, 
the two girls, that's the uh, girls that were settling people down into bed while I did the drugs, will help you around. Anyway, for the first hour, I never seen it. I never seen them, these girls. And we had um, we had this little tiny room under the stairs that we had to uh, <sighs> that we had our break in, you know, the, the kettle in and all that. Actually, those cows have all stood up now. One with horns has actually spotted me already. I just hope this goat shot. Yeah, because look, they come along here as well. Great bit of herd in there. See? Right through there, big herd of cows. Now, I think the farmers might, they do get them out sometimes, springtime, March. I think the grass has been growing. And, uh, so just letting them out. It might be easier for the farmers to have them out. God, look at those two with horns looking over at me. Or it might not be horns, it might be earrings, I call them, little yellow tags on their ears. Look. They spotted me already, look! Oh, look at you! you look wild and, and, and frisky! Yeah, they look a young herd. I'm moving now, look. Let me just take a picture. Hold on a minute. Yeah, I'm moving now. A minute ago, they were all sat down. Some of them have spotted me on the path, look. Because I'm a human, they've heard my voice. They look frisky, they do. Yeah, they might have only just been that out, see? But they're moving quite quick across that field now. I don't know if they can actually get up on the hill. Up there, see? Road from between High Bridge and Western. Busy road, it looks very busy. People aren't staying in really, you know. They're all out looking for loo roll. Ha ha ha! Yeah, moo moos! Moo moos! Hiya! Moo moos! Come on! Moo moos! I think they've only just been let out. We had some sort of pens back there. That's probably when they're going to put the things on their ears and that. They look pretty new, those, what I call earrings. They're identity tags. Well, I managed to do it without getting my feet wet. And there's herds out. The herds are out now. The season of the cow is really here, to be quite honest, because I've missed, I would say, a good 10 walks compared to last year and all other years. I haven't done Ebra Gorge. I usually get that done by, before the end of March. Mid-March I normally do all, all the places where the cows go in the summer. I get them done. January, February, March. Now I've got to try and cross this road in a minute. Um, not always easy. There are some fields that in, under normal conditions you can walk in to avoid having to cross over. I don't even know if I'll be able to cross over because it's a fast road. People have been killed on this road really badly killed as well um, <sighs> I 
Yeah, I don't know if those fields would be open or if they'd be really boggy. I mean, look at look at that there. Anyway, this is Sheila on the first day of spring, 2020, March the 21st. My nephew Kevin's 58th birthday today. He's got his own business. I wonder how he's doing with all this. Uh, not only we had Brexit for bloody ages, didn't we? I always said coronavirus has taken over from Brexit. More power and control. Say no more. We're at their mercy. I'm always... I mean, talk about conspiracy theories. I'm always suspicious of whatever they do. Because most people are out to make money. People make money from disasters, from war, from all sorts of disasters. And you could say this is a disaster for a lot of people. And if they want to change society big time, turn everyone back into peasants, well, they're doing it the right way, aren't they? Don't forget they're the 1%. Roll on the revolution. Over and out.